All right, so we're going up into the second game of the grand finals of the Reddit Playdate Open Tournament between Lucid, Lucid Lunatics and R2R. And in the first game, we saw LL manage to take down R2R with a Life Stealer Clinks combination and a huge support play from De Shadow Demon and Disruptor, who got the items they needed, who were everywhere they needed to be, and managed to just destroy R2R in several consecutive team fights. Quick GG came out from R2R following that, and we'll see how we go into the second game. Miaris, are you still here? Uh, yep. Fantastic. I'll have to go pick up my tea off the kettle in a moment. But <laughs> That's fine, don't worry about that. So what do you think for this next game? Do you think R2R is going to go with a similar lineup, similar approach, or are they going to change it up a bit? Well, honestly, LL, well, the other team, whatever they're called, LL, mm -hmm. seem to be just better players. So if you're worst players playing against better players, you might as well go for like weird strats and not try to fight fair. Hmm. Definitely, I think, I think Wasn't LL there managed even to pull that, uh, yep. Go ahead. There was that Malcolm Gladwell article about that in the New Yorker, do you remember, that started with the anecdote about the basketball team? Yes, yes. They played, uh, so they just played the same strategy every game with a zone defense, that was sort of a gimmick comp, but uh, they beat teams that yeah, were faster exactly. and more individually yeah. talented. Right. right. Yeah, certainly that's an approach. I, I don't think they were really as... I think they got unlucky in a, in a few situations. They weren't really necessarily as outskilled as I think you, you say they were, but certainly they LL managed to get far more equity from their supports that game, I feel like is the main thing. And part of this is that they got the early wards that R2R weren't able, R2 R2 weren't able to counter ward in the jungle. Like, it took Have forever you, like, for to... been reading way too many, like, economics books? Because they keep using the term equity, like, <laughs> for everything now. Sorry. They got more value out of their jungle. Like, a lot more. They got a lot of farm in terms of just gold on their Disruptor and their Shadow What team. kind of value? Well, now, well, now you're telling value. me to use more economics terms. But a second ago, you were telling me to use fewer <laughs> economics terms. Yes, but Marxist terms, you see. Right, Marxist Those are the terms. appropriate ones. Yes, yes. I don't think that the uh, the supports for R2R in that game were getting the full labor value out of their um, out of their labor. The gyrocopter was taking too much of it. The, the capitalist gyrocopter is the perfect image of a capitalist. Does he really need that airplane? Like, talk about your uh, your vanity project. All right, and so uh, let's well, it's kind of a shitty airplane. In fairness, it it is. It's not it's not that great, but it's a passion project. Okay, really. it's yeah, like an army on, kettle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, let's take a look at the bands and let's take a look at the first pick. So, Lucid Lunatics in this game securing the first pick. Uh, they take out the Bat Rider and the Undying. Interesting that they chose the Bat Rider. I guess they just really didn't want to actually pick him up, choose to pick him up first. Meanwhile, R2R takes out that Wisp that they hate so much and they take out the Magnus. But this leaves up Nyx Assassin for Lucid Lunatics. And again, Nyx Assassin, excellent hero. And especially against, they, you see that they picked up two intelligence heroes. Nyx Assassin can respond to this very, very well as this mana burn scales with these end heroes. So Darkseer, extremely good hero. Rubik, extremely good hero. But they are a little bit vulnerable to this Nyx. And Lucid Lunatics, meanwhile, picks up the Shadow Demon that they used to have pretty good effect in the last game. They were definitely able to get a lot of uh, value, I won't say equity, out of the jungle with him. And uh, they do pick up this Gyrocopter, so they, the shoe will be on the other foot in terms of the Gyrocopter this time. R2R, meanwhile, you know, they pick up a Lone Druid. This, I think, favors their general approach where they like to push. They're a team that definitely likes to have a sort of a concerted pushing strategy. And Lone Druid is a carry who's effective at pushing, and so it makes perfect sense, I think, for them to pick that up. Meanwhile, uh, Lucid Lunatics, in terms of their ban approach, actually take out this Phantom Lancer. They uh, don't want the... Actually, Keeper of the Light is still in the pool, by the way, so that's interesting. Um, they take out the Phantom Lancer, who is still would be strong. They have had the option of running the Lone Druid as a solo and then still running the Phantom Lancer. And we've seen R2R use Phantom Lancer quite a bit and been fairly effective with him. So this may be a, a somewhat of a targeted ban in addition to Phantom Lancer being one of the strongest carries available in the pool currently. Meanwhile, R2R take out the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain was doing an absolute ton of damage all over the map last time. They really weren't able to overwhelm her mid and they didn't even really try to get a, a gank on her. So, in this case, I think it's smart for them to ban this out, hope that they don't actually phase this Queen of Pain up in the middle. This does free up the option for one of the two teams to go Templar Assassin in the middle, which is which is certainly something we could see. And then both teams still have the option of taking, uh, if they want, an additional core farming hero on top of the Lone Druid, on top of the Gyrocopter. Because these are heroes that are really modular in how much farm you initially give them. LL actually decided to ban out the Life Stealer, so Life Stealer Lone Druid is something that people sometimes will, will pair up, use the Life Stealer as sort of a farmer, and the Lone Druid in another lane as the farmer, perhaps in solo lane. And R2R continues 
continuing to do targeted bans. So their first two bans are just heroes that they generally don't want to see. They take out the Wisp, they take out the Magnus. But with their next two bans, they actually take uh, are directly sort of a shot across the bow at LL. They take out the Clinks, they take out the Queen of Pain. Clinks was in such an unfavorable lane with the 1 versus 3 in the hard lane in the last game, and he still managed to get his levels. He still eventually managed to get farm, and he became the sort of same Clinks. He maybe a little later than you normally see Clinks take control of the game, but he was doing huge damage at very at a lot of points of the map at various times. Meanwhile, LL, a sort of a surprise ban is the last one. They take out this Chaos Knight. This is interesting. Um, I don't know if Artur were actually going to go for Chaos Knight. He's usually paired up with Wisp. He wouldn't actually be tremendously strong without the Wisp complement. They could go something like Chaos Knight Lashrak and run the Dark Seer mid, yeah, that's especially really to take out compliment. a Temporal Assassin, but... Uh, yeah, they could, but uh, I'm, I'm just not sure if they were actually planning on picking CK up. Lash is also great as a dual mid, That's which true. would work nicely because mm -hmm. they don't really have a mid. Neither team does. A dual mid would be weird because where would the Rubik go? It's just a pure roamer. You really want Darks Darkseer and Lone Druid can do something like either take solo lanes or be part of tri lanes. So where would they put the, the Rubik if they ran a dual mid CK Lash rack, for instance? Dire team pick. It's just not totally clear to me. Hmm. At any rate, LL actually takes up the Windrunner. So this is, uh, is this the first time we've seen Windrunner in this tournament? I, I don't remember seeing her in any games that I've cast, but I'm sure she's been picked because she's a pretty popular hero and she's a strong side lane solo option. But it, I think it might be the first time or one of the first times that I've actually seen them pick up this Windrunner. So that's going to be an interesting choice. Most likely the side lane solo and then they're still looking most likely for a mid. You do have the option of running Gyrocopter mid, but uh, you generally don't want to. And you do have the option of running Nyx Assassin mid, but it's kind of a joke. Artur digging a little bit into their time to actually pick up their fourth pick. Notice that uh, Artur doesn't really have that strong of a mid option either. They could have, for instance, left the Templar Assassin and run the Darkseer mid against a TA. But uh, because they actually bend out the TA and the Quap is gone and Magnus is gone and Batrider is gone, a lot of the strongest mid-hero mid options are, are actually taken out of the pool already. They do have the option of their favorite, so they do have Death Prophet. Um, they run Death Prophet a lot, as we know, and they're very, very strong with her. So I think they're trying to figure out what hero they want random hero to play this time. The problem Death with... Prophet would be good because they've already got Lone Druid too, so they could go for a push strat. Yes, so they, if, if they want to go with their with their push, I think uh, Death Prophet is a good pair for Lone Druid. It would, however, provide the third intelligence hero on the team that's fighting against sort of this Nyx Assassin approach. Uh, she would be tanky, so she can live through Gyrocopter a little longer than a lot of other people do. And they actually go with Sand King. Huh. So that'll be most likely a tri -lane. So very teamfight oriented, I guess. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's Sand King. The issue is, Gyrocopters typically rush BKB, and once they have BKB, Sand King is going to be so, so much less effective against that Gyrocopter. And they certainly aren't going to run Sand King mid, like that's not something that's going to happen. So they still actually need a hero no, for... No, I think if they run Sand King, they really need to run him farm heavy and rush BK and rush Blink so that mm -hmm. they can just win really early off the Yeah, they need to make sure that the Sand King isn't just a... a passively not getting levels in a farm lane like if they ch if they run a lone druid rubik sand king lane the rubik also almost they almost have to spend a lot of their time doing that exact jungle stacking and making sure that the sand king can get it like maybe pick up a rank of caustic and um try to clear out clear out stacked jungle camps no you way. can just grab uh, um a uh, sandstorm and just sit in the camp after it's stacked uh not anymore do they run away don't they it's very slow. Yeah, they run away, but if you place the thing correctly, they basically run to the edge and then run back in. Oh, is that so? Hmm, I guess they could do that. It would be a pretty slow way to get it, but it would work. Um, the other option, of course, is to run Sanky against something like a solo solo safe lane. But then you're, you're not really taking advantage of how good your lone druid is either. So this is interesting. I don't know how they're actually going to work out these lanes. You can run the Sanky King as a pure support, but then the problem is that he gets blink around the time that the opponent's team is getting BKB. And so you're like, oh, well, I guess that was a waste of time. And I'm still interested in what they actually choose for a mid hero. I don't know if they're going to go with their favorite Death Prophet again, or if uh, what they're actually going to pick up. Meanwhile, actually, it's relevant. What is LL going to run in their mid lane? Both these teams digging into a lot of time trying to figure out what the heck this mid matchup is going to be, because it's fifth picks. Uh, Artur actually almost has the advantage that they're picking last, so they can counter pick whatever mid hero LL picks up. And there, you know, they're digging deep into their time. A lot of the top mid heroes got taken out in this draft, way more than you usually see. There are some backup mids, like you can run Dark Seer mid, you can run Rubik, and they actually take Bounty Hunter, so they're going to run something like huh. a, a Gyro or Windrunner. a Shadow Demon mid, or Windrunner. Yeah, Windrunner mid. You're right. No, Windrunner you're, right. you're, you're exactly right. It's going to be Bounty Hunter on the solo lane, Windrunner in the middle. So that's fine. That's a perfectly reasonable mid choice. And they do take the Death Prophet. Death Prophet. So definitely, I think, huh. safe to say at this point, this is R2R's uh, sort of favorite hero to, to play on. Random hero, very, very strong Death Prophet player. 
We've seen some great plays from them. I, I just don't know the, if the rest of this team congeals with this plan. So this is a strong push lineup. Um, but I'm just I'm not sure how the Sand King fits in here. I think, again, the support that we need to take a look at. In the last game, I felt like if the Disruptor ended up being high value, the Disruptor would be sort of the key to the game. And I think that sort of almost ended up happening. He got some huge team fights off. And in this game, I think we have to look at the Sand King. If Sand King gets his levels, if he gets some big epicenters early, we'll see R2R push very, very heavily. The Lone Druid and the Death Prophet can destroy a tower in no time flat. But if the Sand King struggles, I don't know. I think it could be very, very dangerous for... I think LL could easily pick up a second game here. So let's take a look at the, the lanes actually work out the way we expect them to. I think almost certainly the lanes are pretty pretty solid here. They're going to have the Windrunner. Uh, actually, not sending the Windrunner there immediately, but they might try to get a, something like an early gank off. All right, so we got to pause for just a just a second. All right, so we just got a quick pause, and we're about to get started on game two of the grand finals of the Reddit Playdate Open between LL and R2R. Excited to watch this game. The first game, LL were able to sort of take it. I thought Octar came up with a pretty smart strategy. They had the Viper. They were going to get him some farm, get up that Agadims, and be able to shut down the Clinks and the Lifestealer. But they needed to shut down the Clinks more than they did early, and they needed to sort of realize that they were giving the Lifestealer pure free farm. And if Viper wasn't able to get great farm early, then the Lifestealer would sort of just take over the game. And an amazing support play again from LL, just shortening that time window to when they were very strong. So let's introduce the players really quickly. We have uh, JB, who's probably going to be up in the middle with this Windrunner. We have uh, Twilight on the Nyx Assassin, who played such a good Disruptor last game. It was very, very notable. We got Paranoia once again. He's going up on that Shadow Demon for the second game in a row. Andy Licious, their carry player, will be going up on this Gyrocopter. And finally, the solo lane will be run by Phyllis, who was the Clinks in the last game. In this game, he'll be running classic solo lane hero Bounty Hunter, and he'll be block blocking the Creep Camp to start off. He actually wards it too, so they will be uh, doing once again the sort of jungle block, try to get the higher value in the jungle. Meanwhile, let's talk about R2R. R2R have big sticks and 151, their support players. And 151 not playing Keeper of the Light for the first time in a long time. He's going to be up on this Rubik, and uh, Sang big sticks will be up on the Sand King. Again, watch this Sand King. If this is if he, this hero ends up being effective in this game, R2R are going to get a big advantage from it. If he ends up being sort of, you know, not that, not that effective, then they're going to lose, I think, by a dramatic margin. Their carry hero of choice DY Dragon Master is going to play on the Lone Druid up in this Trilane. And on the in the middle, we have Random Hero, once again on this Death Prophet that we've seen him do great things with so far in this tournament. We'll see if they manage to pull something out here. And finally, we have Siren on the Darkseer in the solo lane. He's getting a little bit of huge... The Lone Druid Bear actually tried to help him out a bit, pull a creep wave out into here. But LL, already playing very, very smart. They managed to spot out the, the bear. They harass it quite a bit, and it's going to limp home with very little of its health, completely unable to disrupt the farm by pulling out this lane here. And so this is going to be different for Siren. You actually see him playing smart with this Darkseer, not skilling anything in particular yet because he doesn't know whether he'll need haste or whether he's okay to go with Iron Shell. You see him finally skilling haste just because this uh, if Nyx Assassin's stun goes out on him, it could be very dangerous. He actually has to be careful about how much damage he cops from this Nyx Assassin. This is why sometimes we see Darkseer start up in the jungle and then they transition later to the uh, lane just because without Ion Shell and haste, you're not really that effective. Right now he's literally just trading blows with this Nyx Assassin, which is funny to me. But at any rate, we'll see, yep. how this, we'll see how this lane goes. And then in the middle, we have uh, Windrunner and Death Prophet. This should be an interesting lane as well. I think really the this is sort of the let the most skilled hero win because Windrunner can has better range. She can sort of uh, shoot Death Prophet, especially when the lane is better animation too. Yeah, and and a substantially better animation. So if Windrunner gets a lot of denies, we're going to see the Death Prophet not be able to sort of catch up on farm. But uh, Death Prophet does a very strong spell. She's able to harass Windrunner a little easier than Windrunner's. Well, actually. and like last good. time, we were seeing that Death Prophet just perfectly controlled the lane yeah. so that he'd get all the runes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if he's actually although able this to get time I feel bad for Death Prophet because he doesn't have rune, he doesn't have wards, so it's right. like he's in a, he, it's like me in a pub that he's gonna have to guess. <laughs> He's actually doing, considering his animation is so much worse, he's doing great to actually pick up these last hits. I'm surprised at how much I was able to sort of contest Windrunner for these. They have the same amount of last hits. Uh, so we got this Trilane up here. It's sort of a traditional Trilane so far. It's it's relevant to me that the bear actually is uh, helping out the Darkseer by just trying to disrupt this, this lane here. 
and they're not keeping the bear on the Lundra. The Lundra is just sort of going alone. Because the Bounty Hunter really isn't going to threaten at all, so they could afford to keep the bear here, try to help out the solo lane situation, rather than um, rather than actually having it with the Lone Druid. Meanwhile, Lone Druid, however, cops a ton of damage under this tower. He's actually, if Bounty Hunter notices that Lone Druid is at such a low steady state health point, he could try to get in for a gank. But right now, they're doing a great job of completely making it impossible for Bounty Hunter to get any XP. He, he's actually at level two, but he hasn't, he hasn't gotten any XP in a long time. Which is higher actually than Darkseer, so I shouldn't say that. He's higher, he's higher XP than Darkseer. The bear, meanwhile, is just continuing to be really annoying. I'm not sure actually this bear is doing the exact right thing because Darkseer needs to access these creeps to get farm. And the bear is just sort of running them in a ring around the rosy pattern. I'm really not sure about this. Well, no, he's running them in a ring around the rosy pattern. He wants pattern two stacks. To stack right. two creep waves. Right. Yeah, so that it'll push up. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, it'll be interesting to see what... Uh, I think LL might actually be able to kill this bear on the way, which would be which would be kind of rough. Oh, it, it's going the wrong way. It's going through the Nyx Assassin. <laughs> Lundra is probably spending most of his time like micromanaging this this thing. He really has to get this bear out of. Well, actually, the triple cap, the triple stack will push so far, even if the bear dies, that it might. No, be now he's getting four waves. Holy shit! It's just three. Yeah, but this is gonna push. You can't off to. The problem for Darkseer, actually, this is not. It's not that great. The, the, if the Darkseer had Ion Shell by now, this would be much more effective than if, if he doesn't have Ion Shell. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's not going to get any of the last hits, but he's right. going to get all with, this with delicious Ion Shell, he could, experience. He could actually pick up some of the last hits, though. No, this was smart. I mean, they did a good job of stacking these these creeps. This will give uh, Darkseer that chance to get a couple levels up. Uh oh, Nyx Assassin throws out the mana burn. It already it just takes such a chunk. It's such a ridiculous spell. I think it used to be four, right? They they buffed it to five. No, but it used to cost more mana. Oh. And actually, what they're doing now is they're clearing out this creep wave for Darkseer extremely quickly and throwing out the homing missile. So he won't be, he might not be able to get all the XP from this wave because they're going to harass him so far back. Actually, the homing missile lands at a very awkward spot. The Gyrocopter Rocket is going out. Could this be first blood? The Oh, it does get first blood. Oh, wow. Out. All of that work for the, for the, oh, for the sorry, hold on a second, though. Wasted. His supports should have poured it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. That, that was is... like atrocious by his support. This is a horrible situation for R2R R2 study. Yeah, they gave it the first blood on the Darkseer. They don't. They lose the tower right off to start. He's he's pinging. He wants people to come help him. Wow. He, again, really clever play from LL here. Just really strong play coming out here. No, not okay. Give him clever play, but this is just a mistake. It shouldn't have right, happened. Right. He's gonna get homing missiles again. Will they actually be able to get yet another game? Yeah, they have to. Well, put they in should here. pick off Andy now. Nope. I don't think, I'm not sure if they... Well, the haste rune comes out... Oh, the haste rune. The haste spell comes out of the shadow. What's their mid thinking, doing? But he can't oh, catch. They don't have boots. They don't have the boots to do this. And the homing missile actually going under his supposed to take it. So the Darkseer is actually in trouble yet again. This is just a disaster up oh, this bottom lane for them. Stop right a sec. Now. Look at Gyro, Gyro's build. Two points in homing missile? Really? Mm -hmm. So he just wants to... Never seen that ability leveled. Well, it does a lot of damage, actually, though, dude. Like... He, he really, it's pure to keep the Darkseer out of the lane to keep him from getting levels. Because that homing missile does very respectable damage if you level it. So they are, the most farm on the map is on the Lone Druid, and they're trading off farm with the Death Prophet and the Windrunner. But I think they have a serious problem, which is that uh, Bounty Hunter is already ahead of Darkseer by a level. He's probably going to hit level 6 in a fairly normal time, and they already lost a tower. And this lane is just going to be very tough for them. Even with the Sand King here on a semi-permanent basis, I, I don't know that they have enough. The thing about the... Uh, so Flak Cannon you can typically use to get a little bit of harass on the opposing uh, solo laner. But if it's Darkseer, he can sit like 1,500 units away and still be fine with Iron Shell. But uh, if you have your more ranks in Homing Missile, that actually sort of presents... In some respects, it presents a Hobson's choice for Darkseer as to how far he actually wants to run away before taking him. A what choice? A Hobson choice? Yeah. Fair enough. So an interesting, interesting game so far. Definitely, um, I think LL are definitely winning their tri lane by a substantially larger margin than R2R are winning their tri lane. The Lone Druid is getting good farm, but so is the Gyrocopter, and really, uh, the the Bounty Hunter is able to get his levels without really any issue either. Especially now that they moved away one of the supports to the, to the bottom lane. Actually, they have, uh, they have three heroes down here right now. The Death Prophet has moved over. She has her ultimate. I wonder if they won't try to counter push this. She does have the double damage rune. Of course, Death Prophet's uh, attack animation is so horrible that she's not going to get that many hits off of that, but still. The lane is deflected pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't know what she did there. Almost nothing. 
Do uh, they want to push? They want to push. The... Yes. They want to pop this ultimate and push. Here it comes, actually. So three on three here. Uh, Trilin of currently a, a temporary Trilin of Death Prophet, Dark Seer, and Sanking, and they're going to try to clear out this lane. They probably noticed that Gyrocopter doesn't have flak cannon, so he can't clear out this creep that quickly. But actually, they they pull away the creeps, and the, immediately the creep start the tower starts hitting the Death Prophet. So she's going to get less time on target on this tower. This transition actually wasn't effective at all for her. She doesn't get almost anything. From this. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. She just lost. She's uh, about a level behind Windrunner now. They actually moved the Rubik to mid. He's only a level back from... No, he's two levels back from Windrunner, so I don't know how effective this Rubik is going to be here. They've uh, sort of conceded that the Bounty Hunter will hit level 6. They're just making this a one-on-one -on -one lane with the Lone Druid, who's probably going to be pretty safe against the Bounty Hunter now, now that he has Entangle on his bear. Uh, but nonetheless, just R2 are being forced to sort of rotate in, in uncomfortable ways, whereas LL is just sort of playing the game that they wanted to play. They haven't had to really make any adjustments to, to adjust r 2 strat. Not quite as much stacking either than we saw in the last game. Uh, no, not quite as aggressive. Mostly they don't have the disruptor for additional AoE damage on those stacks. Nyx's assassin isn't nearly as good at clearing out a stack as Shadow Demon is. Radiance middle tower. Bounty Hunter honestly doing quite well for himself. Thirteen last hits, level six. He gets that track. He's going to start roaming soon. They put the death. Yeah, now uh, Darkseer is doing the adjustment. He should have done much earlier, and he's in the jungle. Yeah, I, I think Darkseer almost from from when he saw that the bear wasn't going to help out that much in the safe lane, he probably should have gone jungle at that point. Now at this point, he's quite a bit behind the others, the other uh, hard laner, like Bounty Hunter's at six and Darkseer's so, going up. Yeah, Bounty Hunter. I thought he would just get like one free hit on Lone Druid just for the sake of it. <laughs> for America. Actually, not for America, because of course LL is the Swedish team and uh, R2R is the American team. If this does go long, if R2R end up pulling this game out and uh, stretching this out to like a four or five game series, it's going to be really tough for the Swedes, I think, just in terms of. Oh! Wow, he, did you see that he's shackle? Going the that shackle is going to be critical. The Lone Druid goes into his ultimate form, oh, but, but he's taking a lot of damage from the Spanner and another big power shot, and that will be the kill on Lone Druid for the second kill of the game. And that sets LL. Great play pretty by Bound Hunter. Good. Yeah, they get the track kill. They get some. They get the damage necessary from Windrunner. Good rotation from her. And so another kill, and the Lone Druid gets set back a little bit. He's not that far ahead on farm relative to the Gyrocopter anymore. The Gyrocopter has caught all the way up. Radiance Middle. Where is Gyrocopter? Yeah, he's just farming. He's continuing to farm that lane. Uh, he's got his phase boots. We're going to go for the big late damage Gyrocopter here. They do manage to pick up a lane here. So R2R starting their sort of push approach. They pick up a tower uncontested. So each time that they have this Death Prophet ultimate, they are going to want to be using it if they can. And they immediately smoke. Oh, they smoke. As soon as they're back on their side, they, they smoke up and they're going to try to get a kill up in this bottom jungle. They may find Nyx Assassin before they find Gyrocopter, but Nyx might actually get a caught out by this. Does he realize that there's a there's people... He's got one him? point in Carapace. He's not that easy to gank. No, not too easy, no. And uh -oh. the Rubik won't be able to chase him down, it doesn't look like. They actually don't find him and they've got a TP coming in. So LL might turn this right around with the Shadow Demon approach. There's still two heroes smoked, but uh, the, the Sand King is now de-smoked. The Death Prophet still is. They do see the Nyx Assassin, but he's fully scouted them out now. He knows exactly where they are. And the Shadow Demon is coming in as well. And uh, they're forced to, They actually lift up the Gyrocopter. Will they get the stun off? They get the stun from the Sand King. Will this be enough damage? The disruption comes out. The uh, Soul Catcher, the Gyrocopter nuke is going to hit big. They're not able to pick off that Gyrocopter. And that second Gyrocopter nuke hit is going to be very substantial. The Dark Seer is body blocked by the Sand King on the approach. Sand King, no boots. He really needs those boots. He does pick them up. But a completely ineffectual gank there. They're not able to pick off this Gyrocopter. He lives and gets away. And meanwhile, Lone Druid actually dies to, to Windrunner and Bounty Hunter again in the top lane. They really, Honestly, really, really, really need the poor kill warding there. from Dire. It's really awful. They've got yeah, they terrible have, warding. They do have. They have the one ward here, but the, the lack of vision up in this jungle is is it's really making a challenge for the Lone Druid in the solo lane here. He's having a lot of trouble now. The window. Yeah, they, he should through. have a lane ward. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's weird because our two R in previous games really have had great uh, vision in all their games, but in this game they're really suffering for it. They're not really able to see what's going on, and consequently, this bounty hunter. It, I don't think he can pick up his Death Prophet without help, but definitely he's sort of going to wait for the right moment. Maybe he's going to teleport. He can't... I don't know what happened there. That was just Bottle. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I misinterpreted the Bottle animation. Darkseer uh, getting close to his level 6. That'll be the fourth level of... I oh, know that'll be his second level of Vacuum, probably. But anyway, Gyrocopter just continuing to do a good job of keeping Darkseer off the lane. Check out his skill build. Still no flak cannon. He's just using it as a pure late game tool. For now, he's just leveling Homing Missile and Rocket Barrage. 
Lone Druid, meanwhile, I, I think he's decided not to go Midas. He's just going to go straight for the Radiance, most likely. And uh, at this point, he's behind schedule for that Radiance. The fact that he has two deaths is very, very tough to get that Radiance in a timely fashion. Windrunner, meanwhile, we do see her moving towards the Force Staff. She's going to be uh, very, very mobile. You can see the pure mobility build for Windrunner with the, in the form of the Phase Boots and the Force Staff. And so far, JB has had a great game. I mean, he's so the set up two kills on Lone Druid, which is the key hero to take out. We well, actually have a Windrunner should really go mech, though. Nobody else on the team can. Uh, well, hmm. Yeah, I think he'll probably make mech after Force Staff would be my guess, because he is getting good farm, and it would be good to get the, the mech up on that hero. So he, he will probably make mech after the Force Staff, I assume. While we're paused, let's take a look at some of the other builds that we see going out here. So lots of phase boots. Uh, really trying to get as much mobility as they can in this lineup. Take a look at how many phase boots we've got on the Radiant side versus the fact that it's all it's sort of a sea of tranquils and level 1 boots on the on the Dire side. We do have the phase boots on Death Prophet, which is what Random Hero always picks up on that hero. But we only have level 1 boots on the Rubik and Sand King, which is fine. I mean, there's level 1 boots on the Shadow Demon as well and uh, Arcane boots on the Nyx. But we have the tranquils on Darkseer and the tranquils on Lone Druid. Now, Darkseer, uh, he could already give anybody haste on their team, but that's part of the reason, I think, why they have so many uh, phase boots on the Radiant team is that they sort of want to catch up with phase boots on Bounty Hunter and track. He's not that much slower than the, the haste of Darkseer, so he is able to sort of keep that, keep parity with that. So LL, I think, already with a fairly commanding lead, I wouldn't be surprised if they were... They are a tower down. No, they're not a tower down because they got the extremely early tier 1 tower. Probably about, I don't know, 4k... Uh, only about 3k. So actually, this is a pretty close game. 3k is quite a bit for 12 minutes, but definitely something that they could trivially easily come back from if they so desire. As soon as we get to see the pause, we're actually going to see what they're going to uh, go from here. We do have the reconnect from the Death Prophet and ready to resume. Again, uh, R2R going that... Even from the negative mechanism. Nancy, I think this is nowhere near over. No, not at all. Because you've got Sand King. Like, one big right. Sand King alt can... Yep. And he's not too far away from it. He's actually at level 5. So once he even manages to get that Sand King ult going, that could, that could be very effective. Uh, Rubik actually, interestingly, doesn't have that much of consequence to steal this game. He has some sort of good role-playing abilities to steal, like he, he can get the power shot or the shackle shot from the Windrunner, he can get the Shadow Demon. Uh-oh, Lone Druid caught way out, trying to push, and three heroes on top of him with the Shadow Demon. Once he lands this disruption, this will be a dead Lone Druid. He's going to wait until the last second. Lone Druid's in a ton of trouble here. He has the soul rip. He's going to get taken down. That's a third death on him. This Lone Druid is in a lot of trouble here. He's nowhere near his Radiance to the point where he might not even want to go for it anymore with this third death. Well, he probably still wants to, but this is a horrible position to have your Lone Druid here. 0-3-0, zero, zero, only 62 last hits. He's falling way behind the heroes on the other opposing team, and they just keep getting kills on him. That time, I think he was just positioned way too far. He thought he'd get this tower, but he doesn't. not only does he not get the tower, he cops yet another death. I think it goes down to what I was saying, that it's just a difference of skill. Hmm. At this point, LL are definitely, they're, they're just rotating around the map much more effectively than R2 or R. And consequently, it's just, you know... In fairness, in Sweden, like, the national sport is Counter-Strike, so everyone there is a really good gamer. <laughs> Plus, you know, the Swedish welfare state, nobody works because oh, of lazy course. people... In nobody Europe works, so that's true. Let's, let's not neglect the Swedish welfare state in our, in our discussions. Um, at any rate... So they are still, the Windrunner is actually almost done. As soon as she picks off this tower, which she, I think she most likely with the next creep wave will, uh, Windrunner will be able to, actually no, she's forced to retreat, so not, but she's very close to her four staff. She's 10 gold off. One more last hit, which she does pick up. This will be the four staff. We'll probably go to see the Windrunner starting her mechanism. The downside for them is that uh, Death Prophet is actually very close to finishing her mechanism, so they'll have it for maybe a minute or a couple minutes more. I think if uh, if R2R realizes that they're going to try to very aggressively push as soon as that mechanism Man, I almost feel bad for this Death Prophet. He keeps, like, popping alt, and then he does absolutely nothing. Right, and three stacks of Shadow Poison on him, actually. This Death Prophet's in quite a bit of trouble. And they're going to just say that Bounty Hunter is going to come in and get the, get the kill on this Death Prophet. This is going to be enormous for them. The Nick stun hits nobody, but the Bounty Hunter picks him off with a shuriken. Huge kill. Huge kill to get this Death Prophet. It delays the mechanism substantially. Weird build on uh, Bounty that he maxed out the shuriken toss and only 2 point in Janata. Yeah, I've seen that a few times. I, I think it's sort of for... Well, it's, no, it's, it's bad because Nick... Shuriken Toss has the weirdest scaling of any new. So the first two, two, right, right, yeah. Right. So you want two points because that maximizes, and you want to right. max out Janata, which scales amazingly. Right. But mm, I mean, it worked well, because had he maxed out Janata, he wouldn't have gotten the kill. Uh, yeah. And actually, I want to. In his defense, I actually don't think it's the bad in this particular matchup, and I'll tell you why. 
Darkseer can haste the tracked target. And Death Prophet has extremely high movement speed as soon as she picks up phase boots. So some of the most attractive targets for him to kill are going to be moving much faster than he does. So to get those that last 325 damage in, I think it's actually smart in this case for him to pick up that. Uh, the, the, sorry, the shirk in rank four check out the shadow demon i think it's very smart for them to always put poison take a couple ranks of poison and just use the shadow demon to clear out these camp stitches sort of build up those additional support items it looks like he's actually going to go power treads or he might go straight for necronomicon uh, i'm not quite sure what he's going to do with that both so most likely power treads i would guess uh, Death Prophet does manage to deny that tower, so Windrunner didn't actually manage to get that kill, and they're pushing once again. They probably will pop this Death Prophet ult. Will this be a more successful ult than the last few? This Death Prophet still only has level 1 ultimate and not level 2. Ruby gets picked off before Dark Seer can come in and actually do anything about it. The Shadow Demon is low, so if Dark Seer finds him, he could do something. Death Prophet destroys the tower. Uh, Shadow Demon, great jukes. Check this out. He's probably not going to die to this Dark Seer. Dark Seer gives up. He gives up and he was right on top of the Shadow Demon. The Shadow Demon supports out safely. Vacuum would have totally wrecked him. Oh, actually, Vacuum was on cool though. But wow, great play again from so, uh, just running rings around r 2 in terms of individually. Uh, right, and, so uh, I think we're going to see a very, very early GG here because, as you said, it's late for them. They don't want to drag it out. Uh, it's actually late for LL. It's not late for r 2 they're, they're the US team. LL is the Swedish team. Yeah, but I'm saying they've just got done playing a really long game. That's true, I don't but that think was they want to drag this. I don't know. I, I think it's close enough. They they still have a decent amount invested in this. In no, this they won't it. give up now. Right. But I'm saying if it continues like this, going uh, Mjolnir on the at least Maelstrom on the bear, which is smart. I think Radiance at this point is a lost cause in my opinion. So he's going to go. It's still a farming item, but more of an immediately relevant like a, a team fight item in for, past the 30, 30 minute mark. Which is smart. I think the I think the Mjolnir on this Lundruid is going to be fairly useful for them. Meanwhile, let's take a look at where Gyrocopter is at. He's uh, actually finished up with his Yasha. They're not quite as worried, which is interesting that he hasn't gone straight BKB. He's just not worried about that epicenter, really. And really, we haven't seen a single... Have we even seen an well, epicenter cast? Look. Uh-oh, Lone Druid. No, he doesn't have Lone Blink. Druid. I think Sand King... Big Nick stun and Bounty Hunter the... is right on top of this Lone Druid. They actually pick up the Bounty Hunter and a Tank Glove, so they might be able to turn this around. Sand King stuns him. Another amazing shackle from the Windrunner. Will Bounty Hunter get away? Bounty Hunter will get away, and Sh Lone Druid is going to die. Lone Druid goes down again, the fourth death, and a big nuke coming out as well, with a huge Nyx Assassin stun on top of it. Their entire team is getting taken apart. Yeah, okay, this again. is going to be a GG really soon. Uh-oh, double kill for Gyrocopter, and the Sand King taking a lot of damage while sitting in. Oh, he's going to get killed Whoa. off by the Shadow Poison again. Rubik gets away with a critical shadow demon, uh, sorry, a steal of the shadow walk from Bounty Hunter. But Windrunner yeah, and okay, come on. teaming up to take him down 10-0. You wouldn't concede at this point? I wouldn't, of course not, okay. but certainly they're way behind. Miris, nobody wants to discuss with you Jesus. whether it's a GG or not. It's the least interesting discussion you could possibly have. I was, on the other game, I was saying they should play it out because I thought it was really close. That's true, for once you did. At any rate. See, um, I think had Hitler like played a game of Dota 2 with you, he'd probably not have invaded St. Petersburg because he's like, oh, these Russians are just not going to give up. <laughs> wow. Again, a huge shackle. These shackles every time have been on point. This Windrunner is playing extremely, extremely well. Really, the most farm person on the map is last. Another big... These Gyrocopter nukes are extremely well placed. They just sort of backstep and place the gyrocopter nuke in such a way that it double hits almost everybody on the opposing team. And that takes away R2R's ability to chase completely. And we still haven't seen a single epicenter. Sand King is only level six, by the way, but he does have you the epicenter. Can't... Yeah, but you can't really epicenter without blink. Well, I mean, you can only no, if the other team's really, really, really bad. No, you can. For instance, they had no stuns left after the Nyx Assassin stun and the uh, Windrunner Shackle went out in the last one. So he, he could have actually pulled it off. I don't know how many people it would have hit, but he's just trying to time it exactly right, and he's sort of suffering for that because uh, he's. I think he's making the perfect the enemy of the good in this case. But Gyrocopter well on his way to finishing off his Mantis style. I don't, I'm kind of scared to look at the gold graph. I think it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 12k. No, it's actually only up to about 10k, so not not huge. But this Bounty Hunter is looking for... just a, <laughs> He's just scaring the Lone Druid. Lone Druid isn't even going to kill that Mud Golem. Oh, Mud Golem does die. Wow, smart. I didn't realize the Mud Golem would tick down from the Entangle. I mean, I knew it was a damage over time, but I didn't know it would kill him. And they just don't have very much on this Dark Seer either. I think he's going to try to build towards his, his Shivas as quickly as possible, but he's not really anywhere near it. He's about a quarter of the way there. 
Uh, and this gyrocopter is going to become very intimidating indeed at this point. If we took with the net worth gyrocopter, the most worthwhile person, he's got this most of a manta. But Windrunner is most worthwhile person. Wow! So <laughs> yes, your money determines human your worth. Being. Nice. Yes, absolutely, no question about it. We did talk about how I was an economist, right? They actually popped the Death Prophet ultimate to get this, but the Shadow Demon just in time to actually deflect that. And I'm not sure. Another I'm amazing. Stanking episode uh, is coming out. Huge shoot. shackle stops him. Huge shackle stops the episode from ending that. And another power shot. Take out that four staff down to the low ground. Just such high level play. Yeah. And they're only able to just pick up the Shadow Demon there, even though they use the Death Prophet ultimate again. Just once again, not being able to. Do it and no Mjolnir on the Lundred Bear yet. What's they up? used like three ultimates and they got like their lowest farming support, I suppose, yeah. like the minor constellations. Right, right. I think they really wanted the gyrocopter, but there was just w really well timed disables all through that. And Lundred's in a lot of trouble again. DY Dragon Master is just getting caught out of position repeatedly in this game. Big Sand King stun. Oh, if nice stun. He had for the Sand King, now, though. but excellent stun, absolutely, from Big Sticks there. And the Bounty Hunters, they're now on the retreat. The Snix Assassin can always pop. Uh, Homie Missile was stolen by the Rubik, but that's not that consequential of an ability. And the Darkseer stuff, another great Force Staff, and oh, she's our Power Shots, Shackles, and gets the hell out. That's this Wind Order style. This is going to be another huge nuke, completely covering their escape. And the Death Prophet has, is very, very slow right now. She is, she does speed back up. This Gyrocopter's in there doing quite a bit of damage. Homie Missile getting flowing out, and this Darkseer oh, is wow. going to be a long disable. This Darkseer is going to go down. And the Lundra is in a lot of trouble as well, getting chased down by this Bounty Hunter. He doesn't have the mana, but the Power Shot takes him down. And LL through okay. every single team fighter just coming out with huge plays. I mean, the bounty hunter most of the way. There we go. Is, and we get the GG for game two. LL with an even more commanding performance in the second game than the first game. I felt that in the first game, R2R had opportunities to come back, but LL sees this game completely by the throat. Yeah, there was this no was lane just that they slaughter. lost. No lane that they lost. They won the the solo versus tri lane essentially by rotating people over after the lone druid was alone. They won their lane handily by denying Darkseer all of his ability to pick it up. Even when he they did the clever quadruple stack, uh, LL managed to take advantage of the stacked creeps by getting a tower and the first blood there. And they that uh, they was didn't lose just a failure on the supports to not have any TPs and poured in. That's Had true. they poured it That's in true. there, they would have turned it around instantly. That's it's, it's true. It's very possible that if Rubik and uh, Sankin can actually come in there, they would have made uh, made hate out of that. But unfortunately, they didn't, and that sort of set the tone for a game in which LL shows incredible dominance. And it's going to be hard, I think, for uh, R two R to sort of come back from this into now they have to win three in a row essentially. All right, and we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Sound resumed. Hey hey. Yeah, welcome back. That game looked a lot like the last one. I think that game was actually way more one-sided. LL just fucking like, destroyed them. Yeah, r 2 looked a couple times like they were going to rally, though, that game. I almost but thought, I don't know, I maybe. didn't quite get it. Yeah, I mean, the Sanking didn't end up low, high, like, he was only level 6 even at the very, very end, so. And he only landed at basically one epicenter, and there was a huge shackle shot. Honestly, it I think they just really got outplayed. Just the shackle shots were just superb all game long yeah for sure the window runner was was just had some huge plays huge ganks just all over the map i, I don't know the, the other issue was um that first blood and the whole way that that hard lane for dire actually went was was really really tough they needed to yeah definitely uh miaris pointed out my co-caster that they if they had ported over sankig and rubik really really timely when they were diving that tier one tower past the tier one tower there they could have easily gotten the first blood there like they would have taken out that gyrocopter no problem and they probably would have yeah. almost their lives. There were a couple times where support could have come in where Radiant was diving really hard. That wasn't the only time. I think there was a dive on Silly Bear similar to that where I was really expecting support to come in and it never did. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think I think that has to be down to the supports that game. Uh, that lane, that bond, that one versus three would have just been so different if they had managed to get the get that first blood rather than getting first blood on the Darkseer and losing a tower. Once you lose that first tower as Darkseer... Like, there's nowhere safe for you to go. Like, haste is not enough. One haste will not get you to the tier 2 tower. And once they, yeah, once they lost that lane, that. it was just going to be incredibly hard. They had to rotate people down. They rotated the sinking down permanently. And then the lone druid was exposed. Yeah, they were just going to pick off. Really nice ganks on the silly bear throughout the game. Yeah, Bounty yeah. Hunter really did a good job at that. Uh, in the tri lane, when it was consistent and uh, when it uh, broke down, like you just said, um, he just got ganked all the time. Also, um, we, we talked about it, um, setting track on City Bear just to get him out of the jungle. We a little bit of mind game there. 
yeah, have yeah. actually worked. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. So, what do you, what do you think at this point? Do you think three zero, or do you think Arturo will manage to rally and uh, take a game or two off? Um, I mean, at this point, LL is looking dominant. I personally really hope that R2R can rally. I'd like to see a good game, because so far, the first two have really been stomps. Windrunner! Yeah, at this point, I'm not sure. I, th I think I'm probably leaning towards the fact that it's most likely going to end up in a 3-0. I, th I think they have a more competitive game in them. I don't think R2R are, are out of this by any stretch of the imagination. But LL right now are displaying such great execution across all their... Like, the Windrunner in that game sort of just... It's been different players, too. In the first game, the supports just played an amazing game. And in this game, the yeah, Windrunner just completely took control. Absolutely agree. I'm not seeing the same type of really organization and uh, lineups coming out, though, from R2R that we've seen before. Like, I'm not sure why they picked up the Lone Druid there. It doesn't really fit their play style that well, I don't think. Well, it's, I think they wanted to push have a very heavy push composition with the Death Prophet. Because um, Lone Druid, obviously, a very strong pusher also. But, I don't know, they just didn't get him. They, the thing about R2R, and we, we've seen this in, I think, every one of their games, is they just don't get quite as quick farm on their primary carry as we see some of the other teams do. Yeah. And in that for... game... Yeah, go ahead. For me, for Silly Bear to really be successful, he needs that strong early presence. And as well, he doesn't have any AoE. And R2R in every game I've seen so far that they've done well has relied a lot on a heavy, heavy AoE, mostly magical damage lineup. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. And I think they, they wanted that radiance there on the Lone Druid, which is like, it's a really tall task if you're not able to farm that carry up extremely effectively. Like, if you hit a late radiance, it's just not really effective. You had to actually give up on the radiance eventually, which I think that was really big for them, honestly. Like, maybe they should have just gone, like, Midas Mjolnir immediately on the Lone Druid or something to help out their farm situation. Yeah, I think that would have been even worse, though. I mean, once you're forced to give up on your radiance in that situation, the radiance is really what they're counting on to come up from him. That's true, that's true. <laughs> I think it comes down to, yeah, maybe Lone Druid, like, even though he fits into the idea of pushing, he <laughs> maybe doesn't fit their style where they'd rather have a carry who has, brings that AoE early. I feel like the Luna, the Gyrocopters of the world are yeah. more sort of their that's speed. That's really what I'd rather see them pick up here. All right, yeah, so uh, I'm ready to go up to the second one. I think my co-caster will join in just one minute. And uh, All right, we're great. going to game three.